Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're having a nice day. My name is Milan and welcome to Fuzitech. So today I'll be doing the review of Realme C3 a year down the line. And I've, I've been using the phone as my main phone for four months straight. And this is what I have to say if, uh, about the phone. So on the first day, immediately outside the box, I got the phone, the SIM injector tool, a 10 watt charger and some small paperwork. So no outer casing and no earphone for this one. So let's see what the phone has in store for us. The phone is 6.5 inches, hence it has a large screen that is quite efficient for stuff like gaming and whatnot. It's also protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 3 and based on my 3 month experience, it's safe to assume that you can drop it from minimal heights without breaking it. At the back we have a triple camera, a flash and a well-placed fingerprint sensor. It's made of plastic and hence it won't break easily unlike some glass-backed phones. It comes in two colors which Realme calls frozen blue and blazing red. I prefer the blue phone because a red phone just doesn't sit right with me. So at the top we have the speaker for the earpiece, a water drop notch for the 5 megapixel camera, and at the bottom of the 3.5 mm headphone jack, microphone, micro USB port for charging and transfer of files, and a speaker. At the right side of the phone we have the power button, while at the left side we have the volume rockers, and the SIM and SD card slot. It has space for two SIM cards and an SD card. Now on to the display. It has an IPS LCD screen with 1600 by 720 pixels with a PPI of 270. Now comparing the resolution with its price, I'd say it fits the price perfectly. The aspect ratio is 20 by 9, which to me is more appealing to the eye. As I said earlier, Watching a video in this phone was a really good experience due to its large screen, despite the limitation now you can only watch up to a resolution of 720 pixels. Now into the cameras. The phone has a triple camera at the back, with the main camera being 12 megapixels with an aperture of 1.8. The second one is 2 megapixel macro lens and the third one is a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The selfie camera on the other hand is a 5 megapixel camera with a 2.4 aperture. Both the front and the back cameras can record up to 1080p resolution at 30 fps. They both have portrait mode at, at, and the back camera can record slow-mo videos too. The following are the photo and video samples that I took using the cameras. In the camera test, I decided to do it outside under natural light to get the best results. So the recording the video experience was quite great, but the image stabilization, it wasn't that good. But for its price, other brands give worse results. So it's a plus for it. Yes, so it was quite a sunny day. Yes, and this is what I got from the surroundings yeah let me show you some photos that I took As you can see, this is the slow-mo video that I took with the phone and to me it's quite good, it's quite clear. So what are your thoughts about this? You can tell me at the comment section down below.
The phone has Android 10 with Realme 1.0 and I think it will get Realme 2 update with Android 11 in a few weeks time. It's also run with MediaTek Helio G70 and they call it the best budget gaming processor. I'd probably agree with them since I've been playing Code Mobile with it and it runs smoothly as I'll show in a while. Other features that are usual for Android 10 such as dark mode that works for most apps smart reply in most if not all messaging apps, live caption and others. Realme UI is quite good and since it's still new, I'd put it out there as one of the best phone UIs right now, although it has several similarities with ColorOS. It's quite customizable and has several awesome features that are quite interesting. Honestly, I don't think you'll need to add another launcher to it because it's good. Some of Realme UI features include the smart sidebar. It's mostly used for ease of usage of important apps to you. On the right side of the screen, you just swipe left and you'll find features like screenshot, screen recording, file manager, calculator and, and others. The good thing about it is you can add and remove any app based on its importance and urgency to you. You can also customize the icon style and size on your own with several options shown. So you go to settings, you search icon style and select set icon style. There you have a ton of options of choosing between the shapes and sizes of app icons. Now on to the gaming part, the phone runs smoothly on most of the games. The processor has proven itself to be good. The phone also has game space, which I'll talk more about in my next video. Watch out for it and subscribe so as to get updates. Anyways, here's a footage from Code Mobile and I'll let you be the judge of it. I used the screen recording feature, which does it at 1080p and it's really impressive. My advice to you is if you want a better gaming experience and you're playing a heavy game, you clear the RAM. I've noticed that most of the RAM in this 3GB variant goes into the system and I'm left with about half of it. Then with normal daily usage, the RAM would fill up until it's 1GB or less. So it's better if you restart the phone at least once in a week or two weeks for a better experience. When it comes to the battery, the phone comes with a large 5000mAh battery. It could go for several hours of gaming and still have some juice left. When used casually, maybe texting, taking a few photos here and there, it could last the user up to 30 hours. In addition, it also has power saving mode and super power saving modes, which assist a lot in battery usage. So that's a big plus for the phone and I think it will be quite a good experience for the user. The battery also supports reverse charging, which is a feature that is not so common to many phones at its price point. So my verdict on the phone is that it's a great phone and on its price, it's a really good low budget device. Its only competitor is the Redmi 9C, which has a slightly worse processor than this phone. So in general, I think it's the best low budget gaming smartphone. But if you want to get a, a phone with much better specs, like a better processor, better screen resolution, I think you will just have to pay just a little bit more than, than this, its original price. And you'll get a better phone, just like the Redmi 9 and the likes of it. Yes, so the price for the, the phone's price is between 13,000 and 15,000 Kenya shillings, which translates to about 130 to 150 dollars. And I think the phone is quite good. It's value for the money. So you can let me know. If you have any question about the phone, you can let me know in the comment section. And also, what do you think about the phone? You can also do that in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And you could also follow my Twitter and my Instagram. The links are on the channel description. 
down below. Thank you for your time and have a great day.